Do aliens exist and are they among us? Are weird creatures lurking in the darkness? Do evil entities hide in the shadows of your bedroom while you sleep? Join us as we explore all this and more on the Warped Reality Podcast. <laughs> What's going on all you crazy ghost enthusiasts out there? It's your boy Ghost Joe. Welcome to episode three of the Warped Reality Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. You're too kind. So I have a great show for you guys tonight. I have some new segments, some old segments, as well as we will be finishing up part two of the Steve Neal interview. I'm sure you guys loved uh, the first part of it. Uh, Steve is a very interesting guy. I thank him all the time for doing this and just for being my friend and talking to me. That's awesome. So thank you again, Steve. Before we get started with today's show, I wanted to play for you guys a voicemail that I received from a friend of mine named Bill Van Vagel. You may have heard me mention him a few times. He is a co-host on the Land of the Creeps podcast and the Phantom Galaxy podcast. Uh, definitely, guys, if you like horror movies, if you like movies at all or just some cool talk, definitely go check those podcasts out because they're awesome. I highly recommend them. So without further ado, here is the voicemail from Mr. Bill Van Vagel. Hey, Warped Reality listeners, this is Bill Van Vagel from the Phantom Galaxy podcast with Nathan Bartlepaugh and Land of the Creeps with Greg Amortis and Dave Becker, good friend of Joseph's, big supporter of his podcast. And you know what, guys and girls, I think the music to this one is great. The intro music and the voiceover is great. No, I'm not just fucking up, Joe. I really do think they're good. Now, I did have an idea. One of my favorite paranormal aspects that doesn't get a lot of talk, at least lately, are sea monsters and water monsters, lake monsters. Those are the kinds of things that, when I was a kid, I really got into. You know, like Nessie, of course, but there's Champ, there's Ogo Pogo, there's all kinds of them across certain parallels in the world and the major water systems. So my idea for a show is something all about sea monsters or water monsters. Get a, an, an expert or an author or someone who's witnessed it. I would love to have that kind of show on. Anyways, I had another idea, seeing as I'm a bit of a movie file guy, that if you're doing reviews, why don't you do every once in a while a review on a paranormal-related movie? Something like Fire in the Sky or Exists or The Changeling. That would be pretty cool. And mix it up with something current. You got a great thing going here, Joseph, and I wish nothing but the best for you. Maybe at some time I'll come on, but I know that your audience is so strong, you've got enough quality content to deliver what they are looking for. And by the way, don't tell me what, what, what to do with my shorts. It's the summertime. Who knows if I've even been wearing anything below the, the belt. <laughs> now there's something scary to think about. Anyways, keep all the good vibes moving, and maybe the ghosts will come your way and you'll be able to record them. This is Bill Van Bagel from Land of the Creeps and Phantom Galaxy. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much, Bill, for that awesome voicemail and your kind, kind words. Uh, the check is in the mail. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, but seriously, um, I will definitely take your uh, suggestions. You always have great suggestions for me, and uh, I will definitely take them to heart. And I will be getting started on doing some of that research for some sea monsters. So right now, everybody, I'd like to uh, tell you guys a little bit about um, some of these paranormal conventions that go on uh, throughout the country. Now, I did try and look for some throughout the world as far as, you know, uh, my buddy Bill is from Canada. So uh, I did look up trying to find some in Canada and uh, throughout other countries as well, but it was a little difficult for me to find any. So if you know of any, please email me at ghostjoeny at gmail.com, or you could give me a call at 845-379-1331 and leave me a voicemail like my buddy Bill did. So some of these paranormal conventions um, throughout the country of the U.S., they all have a lot of great speakers going on, as well as some cool venues as well. I'm not going to get into a lot of the details of them. You could just Google them and they'll come up. But uh, here are some of them that I had found. I know there's many, many, many more, but here are some of them. 
So the 2021 Michigan Paranormal Convention will be held on August 26th to the 28th. So by the time you hear this, it will be over. So yeah, uh, the Milwaukee Paranormal Conference is from September 24th to the 26th. The West Virginia Paracon is at the West Virginia Penitentiary, which I think is pretty cool. That's on September 11th, 2021. The Scarefest Horror and Paranormal Convention is in Lexington, Kentucky. That's October 22nd to the 24th. The Hexpo, the Gathering Paranormal Horror Plus Metaphysical Convention, whew, is in Asheville, North Carolina. That is August 12th, 2022. So mark that on your calendar. Uh, the Haunted America Conference. Uh, details will be coming soon for that, but the tickets will be on sale as of January 2022. So look into that as well. The annual ARC National UFO and Paranormal Conference is in Roan Mountain, Tennessee, and that's to be announced as well. Uh, the Haunted Savannah Paracon is in Savannah, Georgia. That's from September 10th to the 12th. The Midwest Parafest in Toledo, Ohio is on September 18th, 2021. The Vulture City Paracon is in Wickensburg, Arizona on October 8th to the 10th. The Sasquatch Festival and Calling Contest is in Whitehall, New York on September 25th, 2021. The UFOs All the Above and Beyond is in Laughlin, Nevada, November 12th to the 14th. The 7th Annual Para-Unity Expo in Woodbridge, New Jersey is on September 25th. The Warrens Seekers of the Supernatural Paracon is on October 30th and October 31st in Waterbury, Connecticut. The Phenomicon, awesome, awesome title, is in Vernal, Utah, September 9th to the 11th, and the Sage Paracon, UK. Uh, that is in a couple different places. Definitely look that up. What I think is really cool about that is that they will be streaming in on Zoom um, on October 1st to the 3rd, and they have other dates available that they'll be replaying it as well. So I think that's pretty awesome, and I hope some of these other uh, Paracons also uh, do the same thing because I think it would be awesome to see these things if you can't make it, uh, whether you're from a different country, different state, or whatever. So definitely look into some of those. If you are a part of any of these and you would like to talk more about it and promote it a little bit, get in touch with me, ghostjoeny at gmail.com, 845-379-1331. So I wanted to give a little disclaimer before we get into the next segment, which is April's Creepy Corner. Uh, her segment is going to be about alien abductions. Now, I don't want people to feel that we are discrediting our interviewee, our guest, uh, because both April and I are very strong believers in all things paranormal, actually. So we just wanted to give another side uh, that uh, science likes to try and put out there. Now, science always has an explanation for everything, uh, even though some things just don't have a scientific explanation. Not everything can. Uh, some things are spiritual in nature. So um, yeah, so without further ado, uh, here is April's Creepy Corner. Hello, spooky friends. This is April's Creepy Corner. And in this episode, we are talking all about alien abductions. Alien abduction, sometimes called abduction phenomenon, alien abduction syndrome, or UFO abduction, refers to the phenomenon of people reporting what they believe to be the real experience of being kidnapped by extraterrestrial beings and being subjected to physical as well as psychological experimentation. While these experiences are extremely real to the abductees, scientists and psychologists, however, try to explain them by means of suggestibility, kind of like a false memory syndrome, sleep paralysis, deception, and psychopathology. Typical claims seem to focus on forced medical procedures, primarily of the reproductive system, and sometimes even engage in interspecies breeding. Yikes! Now, let's dive into four of the most famous alien abduction cases. Case study number one, Hillary Porter, a Welsh native who was once worked for the Ministry of Defense, claims to have been abducted throughout her entire life, with her earliest encounter at just five years old. She claims she was taken by reptilians who had telepathic abilities. She says she was taken aboard their ship, prodded with instruments to extract her DNA. And after each abduction, she would experience headaches and find bruises and blood all over her body. 
Case study number two. In 1961, Betty and Barney Hill claimed to see a bright light in the sky when returning home from Niagara Falls, New York. Barney got out of the car, looked up the sky, and said around his car he saw approximately 12 humanoid figures. The couple sped away in fear. The normal four-hour drive home took seven long hours, and both experienced an altered state of mind and a buzzing sensation. Their clothes were inexplicably ripped and covered in white powder. Betty had vivid dreams about the encounter and of a needle being thrust into her stomach and samples being taken. She claims that the being showed her a star map. Case study number three. In the late fall of 1957, a farmer named Antonio Villas-Boas saw a red-colored star in the sky. He claims that it became brighter and closer to his farmland in Brazil. He then witnessed a starship landing right in his field. He tried to get away, but he was accosted by a small alien. He was then taken in the craft and covered in a slimy substance. He claims he was then forced to mate with a female alien to produce a hybrid baby. He says he was taken off the ship several hours later. He suffered multiple thermal burns all over his body and was diagnosed clinically with radiation poisoning. He continues to stick to his story. And finally, case study number four. In 1971, six Arizona forestry workers reported seeing their co-worker, Travis Walton, being beamed into a UFO craft in a shaft of light. The men reported their co-worker missing, and local authorities suspected foul play. After being gone for five days, he returned to say that aliens had taken him aboard their ship. He was forced to wear a gas mask, making him completely unconscious. Walton claims to have met other humans all dressed in uniforms while on the spacecrafts. He doesn't remember much else after he woke up confused and on a desolate road. Most abduction claims are from English-speaking countries, particularly of the United States. UFO abduction claims have declined since their initial surge in the 1970s. Now, some skeptics believe that this may be due to the fact that majority of people today always have a camera phone on them and would most likely need to have the proof to back up their claims. Well, either way, I think I'm going to be sleeping with the light on tonight. Pleasant dreams, spooky friends. Thank you very much, April, for that awesome segment. Um, yeah, I actually, the last one about Travis Walton, of course, was the basis for the movie Fire in the Sky, which terrified me when I saw it in the movie theater. Uh, but it is a great movie. Uh, of course, as Steve Neal had said, it's very fabricated, but uh, a good movie all in all anyway. All right, all right. I know what you're saying. Just get to the interview, right? Just get to part two because Steve is extremely interesting. And you want to hear the rest of his uh, awesome stories. But I have one more segment for you. This one is another one that you guys have heard. This one is I read it on Reddit. <laughs> so this one, of course, is going to be anonymous because I don't want to give credit to anybody. Um, <laughs> so this this one's from a lot of years ago, actually. But uh, this one's pretty frightening. So check this out. I'm from Scotland, and when I was a child, my mom and dad took my sister and I on a trip to Fort William, which is a town up in the Highlands. People go there for skiing and hiking. It wasn't winter, so we were there to do some easy hiking. My sister and I were quite young. I was about 11, and to stay for a couple nights. I can't remember the name of the hotel we stayed at, but I do remember that it was old-fashioned, and we were all in one room together. There was a single bed where I was sleeping, a double bed in the middle, my parents were there, and another single on the other side, which was where my sister was sleeping. I was often frightened when I was a girl. I didn't like the dark, and I was super scared of the possibility of ghosts. I never found it easy to sleep because of this, even at home. I vividly remember tossing and turning that first night in the hotel for a long time before lying on my back and trying to calm myself down. I then felt the bed sink a little next to my feet. I heard the creak of the old mattress. Someone was sitting at the foot of my bed. My heart was honestly pounding. I hadn't heard my sister or parents get up, so I was terrified. Whatever was sitting there quickly moved, so it was sitting on my feet. I felt the weight of whatever it was. I heard the mattress creak again. My feet were freezing cold. It then moved off my feet and settled down next to them again. The old mattress shifted and creaked again. Within a second or two, I felt the coldest I ever felt, 
but not throughout my whole body. The coldness was slowly rising up from my feet, accompanied by a feeling of pressure. I was too scared to open my eyes. I was willing myself to call for my mom, but I was so scared that I just couldn't at first. When I managed to shout out and wake the rest of my family, the cold, pressured feeling had reached up to my knees. When the lights were switched on, the feeling vanished. I have no explanation for this whole situation. My dad slept in that bed the next night, and I stayed awake the whole night in the double bed with my mom. Wow. That one's pretty creepy. Has anybody else ever had a uh, an experience like that? It It could be a case of sleep paralysis, or maybe it was a spirit sitting on her feet. Again, if you have any experiences that you would like to share like that, or any other kind of paranormal experience, 845-379-1331. Also, check out the website at warpedrealitypodcast.com. You'll find all of the episodes there, as well as a blog and some other cool things about the guests and everything else uh, about the show. So that's enough of me yapping away. So grab some popcorn, grab a beer if you're of age, or a soda if you're not, and check out part two of the Steve Neal interview. So as far as, you know, the one thing I remember from hearing things for for so many years is Mm -hmm. a lot of people that say that they've been, uh, uh, for lack of a better term, abducted uh, or visited. Yeah. they say that, you know, they're, they're in their bed. They can't move. They can't. Now we all know. I mean, I even did a segment on sleep paralysis, um, a few episodes ago and everything. And do you believe that there's some kind of connection between sleep paralysis and these abductions? Do you think that, that they're doing this or do you think it's a little bit of both? Do you think those people are actually, actually dreaming or how do you think, how do you think they tie together or do they? It's hard to say because I've never experienced uh, sleep paralysis. Uh, I have experienced being on my back with those beings standing over me and not being able to move. But I've never had that experience of waking up in the morning. You hear about it and you can't move. You know, uh, I've never experienced uh, sleep paralysis. Um, I do believe that the consciousness we're dealing with is very powerful and it certainly knows us well enough to know uh, better than any magician standing on stage um, how to get to us and how to use things like paralysis and hypnosis uh, and projecting to us to their advantage, perhaps for their own safety, you know, because we are, you know, advanced primates, you know, it's uh, to be kind of like us, uh, abducting a gorilla without you know paralyzing it or anesthetizing it enough that it wasn't a danger uh to us who are observing the animal so uh but i don't know for sure i i well my opinion is is that yeah they can they can just stop you from being able to move they can make you go to sleep uh they can put images in your mind all the stuff you've seen in science fiction films. Right. Uh, and you have to ask yourself, where did that imagination come from? Was it always imagination or was it something that's in our subconscious or a shared consciousness that we have that we sort of um, uh, project into our works of fiction? Right. Because you see it a lot. Yeah, I mean, one of my uh, most recent guests that I had on Crystal Panic, she was a, a part of the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization. She had had a, a Bigfoot experience when she was a child. And she had actually said that when her and her twin sister had seen uh, this Bigfoot in the trailer door that they were that they were sleeping near, that as soon as the Bigfoot, she said she remembers the Bigfoot walking in or this big creature walking in and then her and her sister don't remember anything after that. They both woke up the next morning. They have no idea what happened. They, they don't remember his face. You know, what exactly he looked like. You know, and, and like you had said to me a, a bunch of times, and you have said in, in my show a lot, you know, with the alt space, is that they all got to be connected somehow. 
you know? Yeah, they are. You know, so the fact that and people have attributed Bigfoot to maybe being some kind of alien being or, or supernatural kind of being as well. So the fact that you had said that, you know, uh, some people don't remember what they look like or you don't remember exactly certain details from your, you know, some of your earlier experiences. Right. You know, it, it could all be connected in that way, too, which is very interesting. It is. Well, that's why the name of my book and my film are But Something Is There, because, uh, you know, uh, we were at a little lecture that uh, Whitley was giving locally, and I would always go to him because we're very close friends. And um, he was talking about how he is accused of being the alien guru and all this kind of thing. And that he said he's never been that. He's always treated the subject as practically as one can. He says, we really don't know what we're dealing with, but something is there. And Mary and, I, Mary and I looked at each other and went, there's our title. It's perfect. Because um, we don't know. All we know is that there is this consciousness, and it's very powerful. Um, but it tells us we're powerful, too. If we just learn how to unlock it all. And um, it does have, it seems to have a respect. And it also seems to care very much about us almost about the same kind of way that a parent does about its kids. There's definitely that, uh, that feeling there. And, and, you know, the one being I have seemed to have dealt with all my life, she's uh, very feminine uh, sounding and, and feeling in a lot of ways, but that could be done to, as, uh, to comfort me as well. Right. We just have no way of knowing, which is why I never like to define any of this stuff as, well, this is how it is. And this is exactly what they look like. And we know they're absolutely physical. And we know, you know, I, all I can do is tell you that uh, it's never harmed me. Not really. Well, I've woken up with marks and I've got my fair share of, of uh, implants that you've heard about. And we know the implants are real because we've surgically removed them and we've had them analyzed and they're made in ways that no one has the capability of doing here on earth. A lot of the materials don't exist here on earth. And yet that's all been covered up. And, uh, and I feel very strongly that my friend, Dr. Roger Lear, who was uh, investigating them and removing the implants and stuff, uh, they tried to murder him, uh, which is, they do this a lot. And uh, it was a car accident uh, that left him in a pretty bad way and he eventually died from it a couple of years later uh we know about dr john mack dr john mack harvard who uh, was the one of the foremost psychologists highly decorated harvard psychologists that studied this phenomenon first as a skeptic and then found out god there's something to it he mysteriously died being run run over in england uh and the list goes on and I'm, I watched those implants being removed. I have one. He wanted to remove it. I wouldn't let him do it. Um, and the interesting thing that happened is when he x-rayed my arm, take a look at it, they found that my arm had been broken. Uh, I've never broken a bone in my body in my whole life. Um, now I never, never, not this bad either, but it was like a perfect cut, razor cut break at a 45 degree angle. And sitting on the top of it, this is unknown object. And then I have another one in my ear. Um, Whitley has one exactly the same location. He tried to have his removed. And as the surgeon was trying to remove it, he got hold of it and just got one little piece of it off and it moved. It actually moved. This is not unheard of. They move and got away from him. And he said, look, I don't know what we're dealing with here, but I'm not going to continue with this or I'm going I'm to mutilate your ear trying to get this thing. It keeps moving away from me. Um, wow. we don't know what they're for. We don't know what their capability is or what, you know, they don't seem to be harming us. Um, and, and that's always the bottom line, you know, except for in some cases, psychologically, and also relationships with families and friends and careers. If you dare to talk about this stuff, no one really gets harmed. No one gets killed. They, you know, you don't wake up with your arm grafted to your head or any of those kinds of things it's just so uh i think if they're gonna hurt us they would have done it a long time ago sure but we just we don't have any answers i don't have any more answers today than i did back in the 90s or the 80s or the 60s or the 50s hmm. uh, i just know it's there and i know it's 
real, whatever it is. So as real as this reality is, and we're now starting to wonder even if this isn't some sort of simulation or holodeck uh, experience that we're experiencing, the more we look deeper into it. And I'm talking with science. So, right. you know, so, Jimmy Church, Jimmy Church has a great expression. He uses quite often. And Jimmy Church has uh, the Fade to Black series and some uh, show, radio show, and he's also a coast to coast. I've been on it with him. He says, you don't know what you don't know. So, yeah, it's a great, that's a great saying. I, I, it is. And yeah. Just leave it at that. And isn't it a miracle that we're alive? Isn't it a miracle of this planet with all this life on it and everything? And to have knowledge that there's something more that's always been there. And it's part of the same reality you've been living in all your life. It shouldn't frighten you. It, it should be something you welcome. Right. I want to know all I can about, about this reality, about this cosmos. So, so let's talk about your, uh, your films. Um, but something is there and you're working on a new one as well. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, the films that you're working on and that you, yeah, well, yeah. But something is there was just based, it was uh, based on my experiences. It, it was taken from the book I wrote um, about all the things that happened to me from the time I was a little up to present day. Um, and so I tried to emulate as best I could in the film uh, some of those events. There's no way to do them all, but just get introduce people to a film that didn't uh, hype the phenomenon that didn't do the Hollywood thing to it with the loud music and everything. And in fact, in the very beginning, when I have the first experience uh, with the lights coming in my room and everything, I had people say, there's something wrong for your sound. You know, you need to fix it because it was just all quiet. And I said, that's how it was. What? That's how it was. That's how it was supposed to be. There wasn't any sound. There wasn't Hollywood music when you saw the being going, Jim! You know, and, bum, 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 and large rumbles and things shaking off shelves and all that stuff. This isn't close encounters. Um, and so that that made them kind of uncomfortable. Good. <laughs> made me uncomfortable, too. That's how it was. So I was trying to just be honest about it uh, and not say, you know, who they were and where they're from. And they're here to save the planet and us from ourselves or any of that stuff. I just. I just did a film showing people what I knew and what I experienced and let them be the judge. And the second film is, <laughs> is called, but something is there. The episode is the dream time. There are more planned. And, and this one is based on an experience I had where I was in this realm, this sort of building that there's all these strange people walking by and everything. And, and I, realized there was somebody grumbling next to me and I turned around and I was face to face with Adolf Hitler and we had the most amazing conversation. And so I made a film about it and this happened years ago, but I never forgot. I mean, how could you forget that, sure. you know? And, um, so that film's all about that. I don't want to give anything away because the ending's a real shocker and it's, uh, uh, it's really good. This one's really going to weird people out. And that's good. <laughs> but it actually shows how the experience is involved to this sort of different level where uh, it's become more of a communion between whatever this consciousness is and the people involved and the messages that are coming out of it and the warnings. But always, always it ends the same way. And that is. It's it's not all dark. There's still hope. They want us. They don't want us to give up. It doesn't. We can we can succeed still. So the, the fact that there's always hope, um, there's a reason I can even do these films because if it just ended on a downer, like Charlton Heston bent on his knees saying, "Damn you all to hell," right. you know, I I wouldn't want to make it because I don't want to. I don't want you know. I always want to tell people not to give up that there's still hope we can still fix things you just have to to believe it and work very hard to affect change so this film is really about that it's 30 minutes long and uh it's got a pretty shocking ending to it um it's the most visual effects i've ever done in a film 
because the entire film practically was shot against green screen and all the all the stuff behind them is all composited uh we did shoot live action at at uh, a house uh up into the point where uh, the character uh, meditates at three in the morning and sees a dark shadow in the room and the dark shadow reaches out and he puts his hand up to it and touches the hand and that's when he goes into this other realm. So it's got this sort of Twilight Zone feel to it as well. Hmm. I actually think that a lot of people, whether they take this subject seriously or not, will enjoy this film because they can enjoy it on the level of a of a modern day twilight zone and it's still in production correct it's uh, yeah I, i'm right now i've got a shot going uh out in the edit bay right now so I, i'm always working on it day and night so we yeah. got some film festivals to get ready for so i want to finish it pretty soon oh okay yeah that was my yeah. question what um about the release for it when uh, when you're thinking about uh it looks like September, if not sooner. It's uh, it depends what want me to do. If they they don't want me to release it until it's been in the film festivals first, then I'll do the film festivals first. But if not, it'll be on my Vimeo account. I, I've never made these films to make money, and it's, it's and I spent a hell of a lot of money on the first movie. Um, we had hoped maybe somebody might pick it up, but that was never uh, the reason for doing it. It's just that. With the exception of the UFO incident about Barney and Betty Hill done by Universal Pictures back in the 70s, there has never been a film done about this subject matter that stayed to the story, that was true, and didn't invent a bunch of stuff uh, to make it more palatable to the public in the trailer to get him into the box office. Um, it just hasn't been. There, the, the, the UFO incident about Barney and Betty Hill with James Earl Jones is probably the best thing that's ever been done on the subject. So you're trying to tell me that fire in the sky was, uh, was dramatized. Is that what you're trying to tell yeah. me? The, the, yeah. The, the entire abduction sequence on board the craft and everything was completely made up. It wasn't even remotely close to what happened. And Travis will say that too, right? I mean, Travis will, will, will tell you that that's, that that was fabricated a little bit too, right? Yeah, he will. Um, I mean, it, all you have to do is read his book. I read his book way before the movie came out. And, uh, uh, you know, what he describes is entirely different. You know, he does see the big headed beings. They don't have black eyes. And there's later I found there's a reason for that because what I've seen is I've seen them without the black eyes. I've seen them remove them. So they're like they're almost like some kind of uh, uh, Google Glass type thing. I mean, in other words, they're protective, and we think we don't know for sure. But we think it's possible that they are getting data on a screen that they can see while they're looking through them hmm. about the environment and, and other things. So it's some kind of uh, covering, like lenses, but underneath they have these stunning big uh, irises and pupils. Um, and that's what he saw. Uh, he never saw anything, but he also saw people on, bo on board, whatever the craft was, if it is a craft. We don't even know that those are crafts. For all we know, um, I mean, a lot of people describe a black hole. My mother did years later when she started admitting to me that it, this ran in the family. She was out on her porch with my grandmother and she said she saw this lack of stars in one part of the sky because she's way out in the country and it's moving and it's a circle. This is very common. And then suddenly light started to appear out of the center of it, shining around. And they shined at her. She got scared, went in the house, and she didn't remember what happened after that. Well, I hear this from all kinds of people. Because it's round, they think flying saucer. But it might actually be a hole, like Felix the cat, throwing that, that, that plot on the wall and going through it. Uh, but there's other times you actually see what appear to be physical craft, too. All right. And when he was on board that thing, it was an amazing experience, and it wasn't something that was really frightening or scary or sensational. It was fascinating. Well, that's not good enough for Hollywood. Fascinating doesn't sell tickets. So, so they have to make them come out and fight the aliens, and you know, 
cause a lot of problems. And oh, well, yeah. And then the aliens just were scary looking lizard things. And they had that, that dental dam with rubber over his right. face and him screaming in terror and the right. body parts everywhere. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. That's Star Wars. <laughs> Honestly, though, I saw that movie when I was a kid. I saw it in the movie theater as well. I was, I guess, 13, which was perfect age for that. And yeah. That scared the crap out of me, that movie. Well, yeah, that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. It would have it would have scared yeah. you if they had done it. If they kept it true to the book, it would have scared you too, though. Right. No, well, that's what I was saying. You know, I did a little thing about your your film uh, on the show. The... Right. I heard it. It was great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and no, that's that's how I felt about it was that it. It was more of almost like it wasn't a documentary, but it, it, it sort of was. Yeah. And but it's still it it scared the hell out of me, too. You're you're that film definitely scared me, too, because it was just it was different than like you said, it was different than all the other Hollywood things. But there was a lot of realism to it. And that's I, I love that about that. I just wanted to keep it to uh, my own personal facts, so. So if somebody is, if something is happening to somebody or if, if they're experiencing something uh, in front of them or if something is happening to them, do you suggest they just kind of like, like let it happen? Like, is like, what do you, what would you tell somebody if something is happening to them at that <laughs> moment? Like, or if they, if they're saying I'm experiencing this stuff all the time, like, what should I do? Just yeah. Kind of. I mean, is there anything you can do? Probably not, right? No, just... no, no. Some people tell you to run like hell, but it doesn't matter what you do. It, it, it's it's going to it's going to pursue you, and you're just better off incorporating into your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sounds. I mean, I've had people yell at me for saying that. Oh, that's easy for you to say, and all this kind of thing. Well, yeah, it is, but I, I really don't find it so bad. I mean, I have a very, I'm a very curious person and um, I've never really been afraid of the dark. Not really, not the way people are. I would always want to venture into it and see what's in there. You know, if there is some kind of spirit or something, I want to confront it because I don't want to be afraid of it mm -hmm. because it's always going to be there. And people have kind of just turned themselves off to what we call the paranormal. But in fact, there's probably nothing paranormal about it at all. It's just something we refuse to acknowledge. And it's unknown, and therefore it frightens us. So we cover it up with excuses that we make for ourselves. And we say things like, I don't care what you show me, I won't believe it. So it's a problem. But if people are having these experiences, talk to someone else who is. And, and, and don't don't go to the UFO conventions because they're basically just another science fiction convention. You know, uh, there are a lot of charlatans there, um, but there are people you can reach out to. And one of them is Whitley Strieber and his undiscovered country.com. Uh, and Whitley, you, you can actually reach out to him. He will correspond with you and he will talk to you and he will try to help you. Um, because he's very practical about the experience. Uh, and and we, we know a great deal of people who are not on television and not you know putting out a book every month about the latest probe <laughs> that you can talk to. And you can also go into uh, the forum there and you can be anonymous and share your experience with other people who are credible and are doing the same. And that does help. Just it, it's like that with any uh, anything you might be experiencing in your life that you need to be with other people that are experiencing the same thing, and it helps you come to terms with it. If you're having a problem with it, some people aren't. Some people don't. You know. So I went to sport groups the whole bit, right. but I was my main reason for going to sport group. Uh, was to make contact with other people. This was in the late eighties. And, and that was incredible. I mean, to being in a room full of people that you don't know, you've never corresponded with them, but you all reacted to Whitley's book communion 
and all had exactly the same experiences to share, which in of itself tell, told me right away that this is not impossible, but it's amazing. It, it, there's just no way that this is coincidence that the, this person over here is talking right now ex, in, in describing exactly what happened to me in every single detail. And then one day, this woman walked in to the group uh, that was a new, a new person, and I knew her from an experience, and she knew me from an experience. How is that possible if it's all fantasy or hmm. delusion or schizophrenia or whatever the skeptics like to say? Well, they're really not skeptics wow. or debunkers, but you know what I mean. And I could go all night about stuff like that. There's there's so many things that yeah. I experienced that just because I have to tell you, Joe, all through this experience, and it still happens. You try to deny it. You try to come up with you know, maybe maybe I was just crazy. Maybe that didn't really happen. And you know, that's that part of your brain that that thinks that it's healthy to do that. You know, that if you're not doing that, then you've bought into it too far, and you really are crazy. But. Uh, having a, a sense of humor about it, having a, uh, a certain amount of skepticism about your own experiences is, is pretty important. I think when you were seeing these uh, unidentified flying objects or un- unidentified aerial phenomenon, um, trash did, bags. Did, yes. I was gonna see you just ruined my, <laughs> I was just about to ask you if the trash bags had windows and you just ruined my joke. Oh, well, <laughs> Uh, a, f- a few times I saw windows appear and I saw people standing in them wow. back backlit by a soft yellow glow. Like, like the, the interior was a, sort of a yellow light, a warm light. Um, yeah, I did. Wow. wow. No, that's, and I've seen craft in broad daylight. Mary's been with me. I've had friends with me, numerous camping trips, where I'm not even looking for the darn things, and my and the people that are with me, my guests are saying, "What's that?" And I'd look up, thinking, "Oh, it's going to be a plane or something." And no. <laughs> so, so are they watching you? Is that? Is I that don't know. You, I mean, <laughs> I, mean I guess. Like they, <laughs> that's that's that's. I mean, uh, the paranoid the paranoid prone people tend to think, yeah, they're being watched, and followed all the time. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. And I mean, whenever I see UFOs and I see them quite often, then that one at the end of the film, but something is there. I was on the phone with Whitley Strieber. It was the most spectacular sighting I ever had of a big black triangle with meaning no sound flying over the city, which top secret aircraft never do. We never fly them over populated areas. And we don't have anything that can do what I saw that thing do. Right. And, it, and it was classic. It was a classic big black pyramid. And there it was right in front of me. And I'm on the phone with Whitley and it's like, there's no way I can show this to him. So all he could do is sit there and describe it. It was exasperating. And he, he could really hear my voice, my exasperation about the whole thing. And Mary was in the house and, but she, saw, she was with me another time when we saw a black triangle craft fly over the road at night, right over our car. That was amazing. She did not want me to stop and get out. I wanted to, but she didn't want me to. Right. Uh, and, and it goes on and on. We see them in daytime hovering over the ocean. Wow. Uh, just, you know, so. Um, so the last thing I wanted to uh, to say was if somebody wants to, you know, watch your movies or, or check out what you're doing, uh, yeah. your websites, you know, what are your social medias and stuff? I'm, I'm going to put it in the show notes as well. Yeah. Well, you know about uh, the artist Steve Neal. I forget what the, the actual <laughs> URL is, but if you go into Google and you type Steve Neal, American artist, or you type in uh, the art of Steve Neal, you'll get you'll get the the website um, that basically just has all kinds of stuff from my career on it. Some stuff about this this uh, material. Um, and then the, my Vimeo account, which is SNG Studio, I believe. Uh, but if you just type into Google again, but something is there, the movie, it'll take you right to it. It's been online for a while now. Originally, it was on Google. We got almost a million views. 
uh, they had me pull it because there was a copyright infringement with the music. That's what they said, but there really wasn't. But I got tired, not Google, uh, YouTube, but I got tired of dealing with them and their bots. So I got an account on Vimeo. I pay for it. I can put what I want on there. Nobody bothers me. And the new film will be there too. So, and then of course, all the behind the scenes we do every week of the studio is is on that same account. So you can see life at the studio, you know, everything from the giant uh, Iron Giant model I built to the Enterprise, the captain's chair, and all the stuff we're always making. It's not it's not all about ghosts and aliens, you know. That's one part of my life, but I actually have a real life. Uh, well. <laughs> For lack of a better term, you know, a real job, uh, doing real things that people do, uh, you know, right. that would be difficult for any psychotic, delusionary person to probably uh, maintain a career all these years. I'm almost 70 and I'm still working. I'm still not, I'm not retired. I'm still doing the work uh, that they can go and be part of and, and share in. So. Excellent. Well, listen, thank you so much. Oh, you're doing- welcome, Joe. I appreciate this so much. I'm, um, you know, and also I, I appreciate you and Mary always coming to my. Uh, oh, we love coming in there. Talk shows. Yeah, I, I see you guys are like one of my one of my main people. There's a few others <laughs> that come come a lot too, but I, right. I greatly appreciate you know well, you guys. Well, we down. we found you by the ad in the uh, the camp camp part no camp. Oh, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, oh, really? That's how. Oh, they they put that up there. Yeah, the campfire yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the campfire thing. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah. I saw it there, and I said, "We ought to check that out," you know, because we had checked out some other ones, and they were just they weren't very good. So, and, and then I came in there. I heard your voice, and I heard about where you were talking about the subject, and you were being very open minded and very practical. I said, "No, this guy's for us. I, I got to stand around and hear what people say," you know. So. <laughs> And we really appreciate what you're doing um, because what you're doing here and people are listening to it, you may have people that are on the fence. And when you get people on that are credible and don't try to convert you or get you into the, uh, the religion of gray aliens and the anal probe, they're going to come, they're going to take a closer look at this stuff. Maybe there really is something to this and there really is. And it, the more you look into it, the more, evidence you're going to find and, and you're really helping to bring that forward appreciate that yeah i mean that that was my my whole thing was you know and and also with my podcast as well i always tell people call in with your experiences and everything and that's that's my biggest thing is that i feel like with with the show that i have in the virtual reality thing i want people to be able to come in and tell their experiences and not be judged yeah. about it I want them to come in and say, because I've had experiences. I mean, like I've said a million times, I don't care whether people believe me or not. That's just, you know, I, I mean, you're, you're at that same thing too. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm over it. What people think, yeah. I mean, for me, it's like, I, I'll tell you my experiences. I don't care whether you believe me or not. I know I believe me, you know, and I know that they were real, at least to me, they yeah. were real. You know, so you, that, you know what you know. experienced. It's that you knowing, know, so, not believing, knowing. And and that's why I've I've like I said, I welcome skeptics in there. But if you're going to be disrespectful towards people, I'm kicking you right out. Yeah, it's just not right. I want people to come in there and be able to tell their experiences as honest as they could. And it's it's gotten a lot of great feedback, you know, because a lot of people, you know, as you've seen, a lot of people come back and say, oh, you know, thank you so much. And, you know, so I, you know, I definitely enjoy doing that. And I hope, uh, you know, I'm going to keep doing that show. as much Good. As keep it up. Um, yeah, I'll do the same with my movies and my books. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and your book is available on, on Amazon. Am- you can steal it, and and I recommend that you do. Uh, it's because what they do is they they put it on Kindle for free a lot. They want way too much money. I don't have any control over uh, the money they charge for the hardback, but some of the are the softback. But people buy it because it's got a lot of my artwork in it and stuff, so they don't mind that. But overall, most of the readers, and it's been quite a few. Uh, they go for the Kindle, which is like $5, or you can get it for free quite often. And like Abby Hoffman, I say, steal this book, <laughs> you know, but um, the emails I've got from people uh, made it all worthwhile. Just amazing, wonderful people that have communicated with me and said, I never told anybody this before, but I feel like I can. 
after I saw your film or I, or I read your book because you made me feel like I wasn't crazy anymore. So maybe that's, maybe that's why it's happening to me. I don't know. But whatever the reason is, I uh, want to keep it positive and Absolutely. kind of shine a light in the dark and the unknown so it's known. And one day we won't call it paranormal anymore. We'll just call it the normal, whatever that is. <laughs> So again, man, thank you so much. Yeah, you're and, welcome, uh, Joe. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Maybe I'll see you in the virtual world soon. Oh, you will. We uh, watch when you're going to be in there. So I appreciate thanks. it. Thanks, Joe. Have a good one. Tell Mary I said hi. I will. Right. Night. Right, good night. Night. And that'll do it for me, guys. Thank you very much to Steve Neal for the awesome interview and for the continued support of my virtual reality show. Thank you to April for the awesome segment. And thank you to you guys for tuning in and listening all the time. Have a great night, everybody. I'm Ghost Joe, and I'm out. Thank you for listening to the Warp Reality Podcast. For more episodes, guest info, social media links, merch, and more, please check out WarpedRealityPodcast.com. If you have a paranormal experience you'd like to share, questions, comments, or you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can leave me a voicemail at 845-379-1331 or email me at ghostshowny at gmail.com. You can do so anonymously if you'd like. Also, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or WorkRealityPodcast.com. Have an awesome night, everyone, and don't forget to change your shorts.